Welcome to Uncaged, a show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with John Bertrand. Hey, John, how are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me, Dan. Yeah, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, John is the CEO of Digital Diagnostics, a pioneering AI diagnostics company on a mission to transform the accessibility, affordability, equity, and quality of healthcare. All easy things that John will have done by next Tuesday, I'm sure. But uh, realistically, obviously, these are great, great challenges and things that need to be tackled. But before we get there, John, and talk more about what you're up to at Digital Diagnostics, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Yeah, I've been in healthcare technology for going on 16 years now. Out of undergrad, I went to uh, go to work at a software company, EMR company specifically. At the time, that was relatively small, named Epic. And I uh, got kind of lucky with a, a few things there picking that job in that they went from being, you know, kind of a smaller player in a very like early stage industry, making software for physicians, and then dramatically grew as a result of uh, both kind of a lot of good decisions that the company had made, but as well as that market becoming um, really transformative of healthcare overall. So I got to have a front row seat to all kinds of different transitions healthcare had gone through or was going through at that particular period of time. In a, in a senior role. After that, I uh, ended up going out to the West Coast and working in venture capital for a few years, mm -hmm. really digging into emerging technologies and like what was going to be the next wave similar to that EMR transformation that I'd lived through before. AI, computer vision, machine learning was really catching my eye at the time. I'd been involved in a couple of earlier stage businesses that had some success. And along the way, I actually met the founder and executive chairman, Dr. Abramoff, really fell in love with what he was working on saw an opportunity to really partner with him uh, and Seth Rainford, our president, in really taking the tech that Michael had pioneered and, and moving into the mainstream uh, like I've done before. So that's a little so, bit about me and how I ended up here. Yeah, so that is how you got to digital diagnostics. And so tell me more about uh, where you are now with the business and what you guys are working on. You know, I, I can only imagine the amount of change that's happening. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's uh, it's another kind of good, uh, I guess, lucky bet on my part uh, in terms of you know being at the right place at the right time. So we're known for being the first and only FDA cleared fully autonomous diagnostic, meaning there's no physician in the loop uh, creating this diagnostic output. Anytime you hear someone talk about AI in healthcare, there's some doctor in the background saying, yes, that's okay. Yes, that's okay. Which means there's a lower regulatory burden there's a lower kind of proof point you need to meet with the product from a science and technology testing perspective. Um, and there's also a lower value unlock for the overall healthcare system and the patient when you still have that doc involved, you're still paying the physician. And again, you're not, um, you're not kind of demonstrating the same type of quality that you required when you go to fully autonomous. Uh, so that, that's what we're known for. The primary use case is the diabetic eye exam, or that's our cleared product. Mm -hmm. uh, why that's valuable is every diabetic patient in the United States is at risk of diabetic retinopathy, a, a disease that's tied to diabetes that sends you down uh, the vision impairment, ultimately to blindness pathway mm -hmm. and impacts 80% of the 32.4 million diabetics in the United States. Uh, globally, there's 425 diabetics and there's a large untested population anywhere between 85 and 50% of the population, depending on what study that you find to be most credible. So what we're really working on or have been working on the last several years since our FDA clearance in 2018 is bringing that product from kind of that early stage, early adopter, people just playing with the tech because it's cool into the mainstream. Uh, so the last few years have been really focused on growing our commercial footprint, continuing to go into new and interesting uh, uh, clinical care venues. Yeah. So right now we're, we're revenue generating, we're, you know, uh, quadrupling revenue this year from last year, and we'll repeat that again next year. So really starting to scale the business. Uh, it's really at that revenue inflection point, which is a really fun, exciting time for, for any business to be at here as people are starting to really like grab onto and get comfortable with AI as a technology in healthcare. Well, I mean, firstly, obviously, congratulations on the amazing progress that digital diagnostics and you and the team are making. 
Uh, I'd love to kind of just delve a little bit deeper on putting the whole diagnostic space and, and what you guys are developing in context. I mean, it sounds to me like we're talking about something that's going to really shift the shift the market, shift how people are thinking about uh, assessing their health, uh, evaluating what they need, hopefully getting care when they might not have in the past. It, and it sounds like you've obviously started on a key area, which is the diabetic marketplace. But tell me more about how you place yourselves inside the broader diagnostic market. Yes, you're right. It is a broad market. And we're specifically focused on frontline care and moving specialty care from a specialist office for narrowly defined tests that patients have a hard time accessing where there's a disease need into that frontline care space. I mean, put more simply, what we're trying to do is make it so you don't have to go to a specialist office for a standard of care test that there's already great scientific research done and great medical outcomes data there to say, if we detect this early and take an intervention, we can drive a positive outcome for the patient. Specialists overall are, are not uh, evenly distributed across the United States. Right. They tend to concentrate around academic medical centers, uh, metro areas. Yeah, big and, cities. <laughs> big cities, right? And you know, there's still a long tail out there of people that live in rural communities or even within a big city, they tend to focus around the campus that they're at. So those in underprivileged areas, even within a metro space, still are struggling to get to that care. The interesting thing, the confluence uh, that's going on at the same time that really I think is is different this time around with people trying to bring in automation to offload work from the physician is doctors are really overburdened right now. Physician burnout's a really big phrase in our industry with the myriad of administrative tasks uh, that they have to do that's only increasing year over year, the number of patients that need these types of uh, early disease detecting diagnoses uh, continue to grow and kind of overburden their schedule. So it's nice in that uh, there's complementing or, or strong incentive alignment here between uh, the various parties and that specialists are like, yes, if you can demonstrate your test is of higher quality or at least equivalent to me, yes, please take that off my plate and help me by narrowing down my schedule to just patients that have disease that really need uh, care from me. And it's really getting them to top a license, which is why they went to med school in the first place. And it's just fascinating. Obviously, you guys are, are growing quickly. Take me through that story a little bit about, uh, oh, maybe the last year or so, how things have evolved and this inflection point that you find yourselves in and maybe how some of the challenges and uh, problems have shifted and maybe new ones have appeared. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it's been a wild ride. You know, some of the happenings the last few years haven't uh, made it, you know, any easier than, than, it, than it could have been. Uh, so we cleared in 2018. Uh, real early days, signed some academic early adopters to really study the use of the product. Pretty typical launch from a medical device perspective. Get a lot of great feedback, improve the product, start publishing papers. 2019 uh, continued along that trend, but really shifted to focusing on establishing reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So for those that are unaware, every time you go to the physician's office, they do a test or spend time with you. There's that claim that gets submitted afterwards, but there's a rate that gets negotiated with CMS which is Medicare and Medicaid's kind of regulatory arm in DC that establishes price for things, including diagnostic tests. So 2019 really worked hard on the efforts there to, to frame up what we thought our value was. Uh, 2020, right as the pandemic's hitting, we get reimbursement, uh, but all of a sudden providers are very focused, understandably so on COVID. Uh, that's the number one priority for everybody. And we're out there saying, hey, look at our exciting <laughs> automated test that's uh it's a test that's probably not a high priority for you right now yeah. so um really we're seeing big uptake here this year with two things happening one national reimbursement was set for our test which is huge now 90 percent of all diabetics have reimbursement established commercial or medicare medicaid doesn't matter it's 90 percent of the total population and providers are coming out of the back end of the pandemic going you know, in 2020, when we didn't do any testing for diabetic retinopathy, those patients didn't magically go away. In fact, their disease progressed, continued to progress undetected during that period of time. So there's large backlogs to work through. Physicians already burnt out, overloaded and overburdened from a scheduling perspective, now find themselves clamoring for automation uh, in a similar way to how we saw things in 2020 around telemedicine and the big the kind of adoption and push that was there because people don't want to go in and you know catch the virus that was out there at that point in time. Yeah, so it's really interesting because 
it somehow has probably created a bit of a surge of interest and demand, mostly because people just, they don't have the resources, they don't have the time, they have a backlog, they've got to get this stuff sorted out. And that actually presents an incredible opportunity to build a new process where, where you guys can get embedded in, in that. And it, it's funny, I think people sometimes forget how complex it is to bring a powerful uh, you know, healthcare related solution to market that you have to get government sign off and you know, all of these lovely processes that you have to go through. Uh, but it sounds like you guys have built a, a solid foundation. And now that you have that, tell me a little bit more about what you guys are thinking about for next year and mm -hmm. uh, what you think the next milestones are going to be. Yeah, we have a few on the radar. Uh, we have a, an exciting commercial partnership where we'll be able to announce here in probably four to six weeks that I'll just tease that for now. Wow. <laughs> and, yeah, really vague, but uh, uh, legally required to keep it that way for now. <laughs> And then we have uh, additional products here where we have a product, uh, Three Derm Spot, which autonomously detects skin cancer using a smartphone. And that is uh, ready to go from a trial perspective in the final steps of conversations with the FDA. We'll be kicking that off next year. That's one I'm incredibly excited about. Uh, our diabetic retinopathy test uses a, an existing piece of specialty hardware. That's a medical device called the Fundus Camera. Mm -hmm. uh, widely adopted and used throughout healthcare, but in moving into the dermatology space, we're able to put that onto you know, your smartphone, which you've already got in your pocket there. So it's a, an exciting, I think groundbreaking or game-changing type of move, getting the same type of proven tech uh, that we've used to date, we've cleared, we validated in the field onto a piece of hardware that is much more widely accessible and much cheaper to manufacture and get out there into provider and patient's hands. Wow. And I mean, the, just the breadth of, uh, of people that could access that is incredible. Um, well, John, this has been really wonderful to hear what digital diagnostics is up to and also kind of your, your process through this whole space. You've certainly seen the healthcare world from all of its different angles. And uh, this company seems to be moving very, very quickly. If someone wanted to learn more about what you and the team are up to at digital diagnostics, where should they find you? Well, digitaldiagnostics.com is probably the, the fastest place. Uh, you should follow us on, on LinkedIn as well. We post a lot of content there uh, or follow me as well. I'm, I'm pretty active there talking about what we're doing, uh, other innovations we see in the space that we think are exciting. Uh, we try to be really supportive to everybody that's in this digital health space. It's, a, it's an exciting frontier. It's also you know very challenging. So we like to talk about not only what we've got going on, but other things we see that uh, we feel add value to patients and providers' lives. Well, I'm, I'm excited to hear that more people are going back and getting testing and diagnostics done. And certainly, I, I love to hear the fact that we're applying new technologies, new ideas like what you guys are building at Digital Diagnostics. Uh, we've been speaking with John Bertrand. He's the CEO of Digital Diagnostics a pioneering AI diagnostics company on a mission to transform the accessibility, affordability, equity, and quality of healthcare. Thanks so much for being on the show today, John, and I uh, look forward to having you back. Great. Thanks so much, man. You have a good rest of your week. Cheers.